So I'm going to demonstrate how we're going to make this closure using the V-lock suture. V-lock suture does have a barbed sort of uh, texture to it and thousands of small barbs within the suture itself. That helps keep the suture running in a single direction and prevent dehiscence. In this case, we're going to do our deeper layer first. And in order to do so, we're going to advance this towards the apex of the incision. And we're going to come out of the apex in this type of manner. Once we've done that, you can see here, if I try to pull in this direction, the suture does not pull. But when I pull in the forward direction, the suture does pull. And that's because those small barbs are actually preventing it from being pulled in the reverse manner. Now I'm coming to the other side, and again, approximating just about the same area as where I inserted the original suture. And in doing so, we're now going to take the loop at the end of the suture, and we're going to pass our needle through this loop. And what that does is it locks this down in place such that we get a nice tight closure. Now, what we're going to do at this point is start to run the suture in the same depth as we've done on the other side. And we're going to run the entire length of this wound. Now, while this suture can cinch down very tightly, really our goal is just to approximate the wound, but not strangulate the tissue. And by strangulating the tissue, what I mean is if you pull too hard, it can actually induce necrosis, which we want to avoid. So in this case, I'm just carefully taking even bites of tissue. And I'm working my suture so that, again, I'm approximating, but I'm not strangulating the tissue. Now, while it is impressive that we did not have to create a knot to get this run started, what's even more impressive is that we don't have to create a knot when we finish this run. The barbs within the suture itself hold the wound together very securely and certainly prevent the tissue from coming apart. So our goal is to run the suture and then simply come back through the tissue and then cut the suture without the need to create a knot. So this will be my final portion of this run. At 
which point I'm going to take the needle, pass it through the skin, and you can see within a matter of a few minutes, my first layer is already complete. So a number of my peers really come to me with uh, disaster stories about a variety of different uh, situations, particularly when wounds dehiss as a result of patient's activities too early after the implant, things like that. And what I can tell you is, is that the best way to mitigate those types of situations is to take a look at the method of closure that you're, uh, you're using and to see if you can use something that's really designed to help reduce those risks. The disasters not only are uncomfortable for patients, but they're also very inconvenient for us as physicians as we have to take time out of our day to address these types of complications. So I do think that it's a good idea in general to take a look at all of the different, all the different techniques that you're using and to see if there are ways to mitigate complications. Once again, I'm going to take a bite of the tissue and I'm going to come straight up and we're going to zip this closed. And I'm going to cut this 